Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where in today's audio-visual extravaganza we have none other, for it is he, than Sea Raptor. You may know Sea Raptor from Twitch, YouTube, or possibly from presenting the North American King of the Sea tournament. I've actually met him personally, I had him over for dinner when he and his delightful wife were visiting the UK last year. He is a thoroughly nice Texan gentleman, and I'm always happy to showcase one of his games. In this case, a Tier 8 ranked battle in the Tier 8 US Navy. Very, very light cruiser with... Um, I don't think I've ever seen this camo scheme before. A sort of Statue of Liberty inspired theme. Very nice. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yes, the ship. <laughs> the USS San Diego. Um, kind of unusual. It, well, in a number of ways, amongst US Navy relatively high tier cruisers in that one, it doesn't get radar. The enemy team do have a radar. Uh, they have a Cleveland. So this is obviously terrible news for the destroyers on Sea Raptors team. Uh, but the San Diego one, it does not come with radar, it does come with a very interesting selection of consumables and ammunition. It does not get high explosive ammunition. It gets semi-armor piercing. Now this is both a good and a bad thing because while semi-armor piercing does hit kind of hard, it cannot set any fires. It is backed up with a main gun battery reload booster, uh, which magnifies the DACA when activated. It gets hydro, and it gets a repair, which again is unusual for a tier 8 cruiser. The repair is going to be useful, but not that useful in this particular battle, because he's the only cruiser on his team. It's ranked, so there are only six ships per side, and both teams consist of two destroyers, which is good if you're in a light cruiser, although not that good if you're in a light cruiser that doesn't have radar, and three battleships, which is really bad news if you're in a light cruiser that basically has no armour and is made out of citadels. I mean, you could say that it's equally bad news for the Cleveland, the light cruiser on the enemy team, but, well, there are light cruisers, and then there are light cruisers, and they don't come much lighter than the San Diego, which is basically an Atlanta, just with semi-armor piercing, instead of high explosive, and a main battery reload booster. The Cleveland, while it is by no means heavily armored, because it is a light cruiser, does at least have belt armor that, if angled, is thick enough to ricochet any of the 15 or 16 inch armor piercing that's going to be slug in its direction from the battleships in this game. The San Diego? Yeah, not so much. Sea Raptor is going to have to be real careful in the first five minutes of this battle. He's managed to get himself uh, tucked in against the island here, and he's used his hydro, which has flushed the Benson out of cover there. The Benson, because he knows what's good for him, is making Billy Big Steps in the opposite direction. Sea Raptor trying to just peek out from behind the island enough to get the rear turrets firing, but not in time to catch the Benson as he makes it out of hydro range and goes undetected. So the Benson got away because he knows what's good for him. The good news though is that they have managed to take this cap at Alpha. So two caps to one. They started with an early points advantage. And given that two-thirds of the team are over here, they're probably not going to lose this cap anytime soon. And again, it looks like two-thirds of the enemy team are over here too. Which might come as something of a relief to the friendly Vladivostok down there at Cap Circle, Charlie, who only has the team's Kagero for backup, because it's likely that he's only facing two of the enemy team as well. Meanwhile, the Vittorio Veneto over here... Sea Raptor's got the torpedoes loaded, very, very carefully watching his progress and inching forward to ensure that he can get those torpedoes away without being spotted. It's possible he might be able to get some shots out. Nope. Ground cover's too high. But he is not detected. The Vittorio Veneto, however, has just seen his torpedoes. It looks like definitely two, possibly three. Two torpedo hits. Plus, the emergency manoeuvre to avoid the other two torpedoes by the Vittorio Benito there is now putting far enough away that Sea Raptor is able to get enough elevation on his main battery guns to start hammering him with those semi-armor piercing shells. Now, the Vittorio Benito pops his high-speed smoke because that really hurt. This would give him the opportunity to circle back around the island, get himself into cover, and start healing up, which would be the logical thing to do. Note, however, that Sea Raptor is still creeping back into cover here, because I think his spider sense must be tingling. 
as the friendly Kagero, by the way, has just gotten himself into serious trouble. He's almost certainly just been radared by the Cleveland, which means he's now getting shot at by the Cleveland and the Akazuki, which is basically a death sentence. Yes, he's dead. And there's the Vittorio Veneto. And rather than circling back into cover and healing up, he is instead continuing to go for it. Okay. Sea Raptor, again, managed to edge back into cover just enough, although he's no longer capable of directly spotting the Vittorio Veneto. Also, his high-speed smoke is still running, but it's not going to be running forever. But he's still got that spit of land protecting him and enabling him to continue to take shots without being spotted because he's in a very light cruiser and there's a free battleships in play in the enemy team. You do not want to get seen if you can possibly avoid it. A few more shots, this should be it actually. He might have the kill here. Yep, there it is. So the loss of the Kagero was bad, particularly for the Vladivostok down there, who's now all alone down by Cap Circle Charlie, but a destroyer isn't worth as much points as a battleship, and that in combination with possession of the two caps has ensured the Sea Raptors team is still ahead on points. The loss of that Kagro has, however, left the Vladivostok down there at Cap Circle Charlie in a very tough spot. He's got an Akazuki and a Cleveland closing in, and he's got very little health remaining. More than likely, he ate a torpedo or two. He does, however, manage to survive for way longer than I was prepared to give him credit for, and that is going to be instrumental in giving the rest of the team, honestly, more time than they deserved to haul their asses out of the cap circle up here at Alpha and do something. The battleships on the team in particular, with the exception of the Vladivostok, uh, they weren't keen to leave this spot. Which must have been kind of frustrating for Sea Raptor, because in a light cruiser like the San Diego, particularly when there are battleships around, you really don't want to be taking the lead. Because you're an incredibly fragile ship. The Vladivostok is yelling for assistance and doing the best that he possibly can. I mean, I'm honestly surprised that he's even still target. alive, but the writing is very much on the wall there for him, as the rest of the enemy team appear to have given up trying to flip this cap at Alpha and are all converging on his position. The fact that he's even still alive right now is nothing short of remarkable, because he is given the team time to get their asses together and make that move. The Massachusetts is going for it, which is good to see. The Tirpitz, however, appears to be focusing on the Monarch up to the north. And the Vladivostok, with the entire enemy team focusing him down, with the exception of the Monarch up to the north, who has a bit of a Tirpitz problem, He's finally been sunk, but did he hold on long enough to make a difference? Akazuki spotted, in open water. Oh, this has got to be tempting. But Sea Raptor's in open water too, and there's an enemy, Vladivostok, right there. Ah, oh, he's going to go for it. Shots out. Ah. And the Akazuki goes undetected. This is really, really bad timing, because if that Vladivostok suddenly takes an interest, and why wouldn't he, because there's a light cruiser spotted in open water, uh, this could hurt. This could hurt a lot. Akazuki's been redetected, but he clearly knows what's good for him, and he's managed to get himself in the cover. Continuing to rain shots down on the Vladivostok, whose guns don't appear to be pointing in this direction, and then the Cleveland gets spotted, and he's on very low health, and he is shooting at Sea Raptor. And of course, he has radar. So, attempts to take the Cleveland out, who sadly gets into cover, takes a big ass hit there. Shaves off a quarter of his health, I think, and a single shot from the Vladivostok. Fortunately, the Akazuki smokescreen is actually shielding him from direct line of sight. At least for a couple of seconds, long enough for him to get that main gun battery reload booster going and rain down some death and destruction on the Vladivostok over there. He should... Ooh, shot's out. <laughs> no, no, maneuver, maneuver. You do not want to get hit by that thing. 16-inch armor piercing really hurts. Oh, okay, good, it missed. Again, he's gone undetected. Good news, thanks to the floaty ballistics of these 5-inch semi armor piercing shells, he was able to continue raining some shots down on the Vladivostok on the other side of the island. Bad news, the Fantask managed to run itself aground on the island over there, right in front of the Cleveland, so it's now 3 against 5. Although some useful intelligence gained there, of particular value to the Tirpitz, if he's paying any attention, he's still going after the Monarch up to the north, the Fantasque was taken out by the Benson, not the Cleveland. So the Turbots doesn't have to worry about getting torpedoed. The Benson is down here. 
which basically means he's got that monarch all to himself. And the monarch's not a particularly good ship. Oh, there's the Benson. Your money would have to be on the Tirpitz to win that particular encounter. It's got much better secondaries, it has torpedoes, and it's tougher. You'd think the Tirpitz would win that fight. <laughs> and you'd be wrong. Which is not fantastic news for a team that are behind on points, behind on kills, and they now only control one of the three cap circles. Again, Sea Raptor, because... There is an enemy Vladivostok over there being extremely circumspect and ensuring that he does not get spotted unnecessarily. He's closing in, he wants to kill that Benson. Oh, somebody just smacked him, probably the Massachusetts. He's been hydroed. Finish the Benson, get him. Nice. Finish the Cleveland. Enemy destroyer come on, come on, come on, got him. Double strike. <laughs> There's the Akazuki. There is no such thing as a triple strike. Uh, we... Oh, the Akazuki. Okay. Um, this is a bad spot for him to be in. He's got a light cruiser and a Massachusetts. What the hell happened to the Massachusetts health? I don't know how many torpedoes he ate. Please finish off the Akazuki. Because the team are about to lose the Tirpitz. Mild spoiler alert there. There it is. The Akazuki is down. The team are once again ahead on points with a one kill advantage, although they are down a cap circle. Unfortunately, that one kill <laughs> advantage evaporates as the Monarch takes out the Tirpitz. Now, the good thing that we can say about the Tirpitz's performance is that at least he drove the Monarch so far north that he is going to have no effect on what's going to happen down here. The Massachusetts basically had three options here. He could have backed up around the island, recovered some health, and drawn the Vladivostok into Sea Raptor's torpedoes. Or he could have just sat there bow tanking him and withering the Vladivostok down with his superior secondaries. Or he can go for a drive-by, giving the Vladivostok an even chance at getting the broadside salvo off and winning the fight. So he decides to give the Vladivostok an even chance <laughs> and loses. It's now Sea Raptor alone against two enemies. And remember, he doesn't have high explosive shells. So setting fires on the Vladivostok and then ducking into cover is not an option. He's in a light cruiser facing two battleships. The enemy team are ahead on points and with two cap circles, that points advantage is going to get worse, not better. He can't take the cap circle here at Charlie with the Vladivostok here, and it's likely that if he tries to head north and take the cap circle at Bravo, he's going to run into the Monarch, so he needs to get a kill. And that's going to be a lot easier said than done. He's got a minute or so before he can use his Hydro. He needs to... well, try to put as much distance as possible between himself and wherever the Vladivostok is supposed to be in order to maybe get the spotting advantage. But that's only going to be good for the first salvo. Oh, there it is. His guns are not quite pointed this way, but it's only going to take them a second to swing around. Oh, here it comes. Oh, this could hurt. Well, that did hurt, but it wasn't fatal. Come on, you committed. You need to kill him. You, you don't have a choice. You have to kill the Vladivostok. Although, he's managed to not kill him, <laughs> but he didn't die in the process. He's withered him down to probably only around about two or 3,000 health. Again, managed to get those closing salvos away uh, without risk of too much return fire by using the terrain to his advantage to mask his approach. Okay, his hydro is now back up. So he knows exactly where the Vladivostok is, and the Vladivostok only has a vague idea of how close he is, or what side of the island he's going to be coming around from. There go the depth charge attack planes, but they can't spot you, so... I mean, possibly he's going to see the tracer from the anti-aircraft guns. Now he's going to know which side Sea Raptor is coming from if he's paying attention because the cap is being flipped. But Sea Raptor should only need one salvo, maybe two, to finish this guy off. The guns aren't quite pointing in the right direction. He's got him. And there's the Kraken unleashed. Enemy battleship founder. Let me just remind you, there were only six ships on the enemy team in the first place. <laughs> he sunk five of them. He's also flipping the cap circle. The Vladivostok didn't even manage to reset his capture progress. This has put him ahead on points with the kill on the enemy battleship. And now, with two cap circles under his control, 
There's no danger, unless the monarch catches him and kills him, but there's no danger of the enemy team winning on points. Unless, of course, the monarch is heading down the cap circle, Alpha, which could be an issue. But then again, looking at his last report of position and how long it's been since he killed the Turfits, if he was heading for cap circle Alpha, he would have been there by now. Which is kind of good news, but it's also kind of bad news, because if he's not flipping the cap at Alpha, where is he? Logic would dictate that he was making a beeline down for Cap Circle Charlie in order to support the Vladivostok against Sea Raptor. So Sea Raptor, because that's the only real intelligence that he has available to him, is making Billy Big Steps as far the hell away from Cap Circle Charlie as possible, while also staying in open water to give himself maximum vision of any British battleships appearing over the horizon, while also ensuring that there are plenty of islands around for him to duck into just in case that monarch does turn up. The only way this could go wrong, because he does not need to kill the monarch, he just needs to stay alive and maintain this points advantage. The only way this could go wrong is if the monarch had anticipated what he was going to do and is lurking in wait, hidden behind an island in Cap Circle Bravo, which may have been what the monarch's plan was, but he severely miscalculated how many points Sea Raptor was going to accumulate before he even got to within visible range of Cap Circle Bravo, and that's a thousand points and a win. With five of the six available kills, an extremely well-deserved crack and unleash there for Sea Raptor in the US Navy Tier 8, I was going to say destroyer, it does have destroyer guns, but it is very much a light cruiser, the USS San Diego. Hope you all enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.